Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the reactions that take place during electrolysis of an aqueous solution. You should then be able to predict the products at the electrodes during electrolysis of aqueous solutions. And finally, if you're a higher tier student, you should be able to write half equations for the reactions at the cathode and the anode. Now, I should point out that this topic covers some difficult ideas, so I've split it over two videos. In the last video, we looked at electrolysis of molten compounds such as aluminium oxide. We saw that positive ions move to the cathode, which is the negative electrode. Here they gain electrons and they form atoms. Negative ions move to the anode, which is the positive electrode, and here they lose electrons to form atoms. I'm showing you these reactions for aluminium oxide. Now, the key fact about electrolysis of molten compounds is that we only have to think about two ions. In this case, the aluminium ion and the oxide ion. Now, in this video, we're looking at electrolysis of aqueous solutions, so let's get started. The word aqueous means dissolved in water, so that means that we need to take a closer look at water molecules. Water molecules ionize or split, forming hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. I'm showing you that here. So when we look at the electrolysis of aqueous solutions, we need to consider what happens to these ions. We're going to start by looking at the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution. Copper sulfate solution has the formula CuSO4Aq. This contains the copper ion Cu2+, and the sulfate ion SO4 minus. Because it's dissolved in water, we also need to consider the hydrogen ion H plus and the hydroxide ion OH minus. So let's see what happens when we carry out electrolysis on this solution. We're going to start by looking at the cathode, which is a negative electrode. Our solution contains two different positive ions that will be attracted to the cathode. These are the copper ion Cu2 plus and the hydrogen ion H+. Plus. So the question is, which of these two ions will be reduced at the cathode? To answer that, we need to look at the reactivity series. Here are the two ions that we're looking at. And here is the rule that you need to learn. Hydrogen is produced at the cathode if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen. So as you can see, in this case, copper is less reactive than hydrogen. This means that copper will be produced at the cathode, not hydrogen. So here's the copper being produced at the cathode. At the anode, we make oxygen gas, and I'm showing that here. Now I should point out that if we're carrying out electrolysis on an aqueous solution, then we usually get oxygen produced at the anode. There is an exception to that rule, which we'll see in the next video, so it's really important that you watch that. Now it's important that the electrodes do not react with the chemicals that we're making in electrolysis. Scientists say that the electrodes are inert. In other words, they do not react. Platinum is often used as an electrode as it's a very unreactive metal. Now if you're doing the higher paper, then you need to know the half equations at the electrodes. Here's the half equation for the cathode. The copper ions are gaining two electrons to form copper atoms. That's a reduction reaction. Here's the half equation for the anode. This is a bit more complicated, but as you can see, four hydroxide ions react to form oxygen gas and water, losing a total of four electrons in the process. That's an oxidation reaction. The reaction at the anode can be written like this instead, but both these equations show exactly the same reaction, so please don't get confused by this. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on the electrolysis of aqueous solutions in my revision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe the reactions that take place during electrolysis of an aqueous solution. You should then be able to predict the products at the electrodes during electrolysis of aqueous solutions. And finally, if you're a higher tier student, you should be able to write half equations for the reactions at the cathode and the anode.